Okay. So, hi. We're gonna start massage the knuckles. Go right into, this is the spine. And the knuckles are just gonna go right next. Just soften up the back. Go as high as you can and as low as you can. And we're gonna just do, keep your feet parallel on the ground. And we're just gonna do a turn and the fingers are gonna point back. Take this elbow and pull it away. And we're looking for a stretch all through here. And then as you lift this arm, the angle, the elbow is slightly out and you push with the palm. Feel the, the back right foot, just push. You can start to feel the outer band on the outside foot. This hand is right in the spine. Wiggle the fingers. Good. Now this, this hand will hold the, the spine. You're gonna press into the left foot, outside left foot, turn. And the elbow is gonna pull you around. Push out, fingers point back. Push with the heel of the hand. And pull with the right elbow around. You can draw your chin towards the right shoulder. And as you lift the left hand and lift the left elbow, you're gonna feel out of the rib cage over on the left side here. You're gonna feel that rib cage begin to expand. And you get a little bit of pressure here with the knuckles in the right kidney. And then we're just gonna take a few steps in place. And we will do a little bit of walking. So we're gonna walk and just massage the spine and the right hand's gonna come up overhead and we're just gonna pull it towards the back. So in profile, you're pulling it towards the back, sort of like a long C or a parenthesis. So reach, wiggle the fingers, wiggle the fingers, reach back, reach back. After we've taken a few, we're gonna Push forward with your fist. Left hand is pushing into the spine here to support the spine, and this hand is pushing into the head. And you're just going to push your head back into the wrist, and the wrist push into the head. And now reach down your back as much as you can and push with your head into the wrist, pulling your hand down. Good. And let's do the other side. So we're just going to reach up. Reach back, up, and back, up, and back. Shoulder. We'll bend the left elbow, push that wrist into your head. Now you may feel weakness in your shoulder. Go ahead and push back with your head. The right hand supports the spine. Push. Push all the air out of the body. Now angle the hand down. Arch. Arch the back. And we'll release. Good. Now what we want to do is coordinate the, the hands and the feet. So we're just going to lift one, and it's a pivot from the elbows. So just pull through. Plant onto your right foot and lift coordinate this is a, a this is a blending of the mind and the body coordinate notice the flex on the foot the foot's not docile or flaccid the toes are pulled up the whole body lifts and sets deliberately swing obviously it's Stop. Let the balance time. Here. And we're going to lift. Ah, squeeze the right butt. And we're looking for a vector that goes straight up. So if you can imagine this vertical pole, you're going to reach with that pole. Ah, reach with the pole. Let's go ahead and switch sides. Lift. Oh, now you start feel this left groin. Lift. 
into coordination while coming up some of the core focus your mind moving a vector meaning that your mind ah, goes from here to here it doesn't piss around here here to here down to up so your visual sense goes from down to up your feeling sense goes from down to up your imagination to up if an occasional stray thought comes in you might or that you focus down to up squeeze everything is tightening the stomach the thigh everything's the, the biceps squeeze so there's a lot of isometric Now we want to look at diagonals. We want to go to this diagonal. Diagonal. So first, we're going to go from the top right and merge it with the bottom left. We're going to come together. Step. Now they're both back. You can imagine a big crescent shape, a big bow that arcs through here. So I pull from the top back of the bow on the right and the bottom back of the bow on the left, and I bring them together. And in profile, this knee is coming up and the hands are dipping, slicing past the knee. Reach. Don't let your wrists be blasé. Engage. So pull, step, pull. And again, squeeze this right butt. you do here is to get warm into the hip now we step forward with the left leg we step back with the right leg center and we're going to just put the hands on the hips and turn this left elbow and you're going to feel a pull through here this hand supported at the thigh now we can go ahead and lean back a little bit squeeze the right inner groin down here the right down and we're going to grab the ankle and pull the thigh and the stomach together and now we're going to ground the left leg and stand up and that was the left so now we do the right so from back here and back here pull through squeeze Set position, pull, squeeze, set. Notice how slow the step is. From here, one, it's down, roll into the foot, set, and pull, down. It doesn't have to be that slow, but it's coordinated. Ah, exhale, symmetric, squeeze. Go through the arc and arc one more time arc step forward into the right you're a little bit deeper here than you are wide so we're going to grab the hips and twist lead with the left elbow or the right elbow okay, and we're going to just tilt back tilt back feel that left inner thigh and we come forward, press weight through the front of the right foot, grab the foot, sink your right side intestine, your right side abdomen onto your thigh if possible. And you're lifting that right heel, engaging the whole right uh, hamstring sink. Now we got to push through this right foot, the head up, push through the right foot and stand. All right. Now that was through the cross X. The next.
would be one member. So when I say cross X, I mean we're coming from the top and the bottom and crossing. This next one coming up in both instances. We come hands back. We both they both start at the lower left and they pull. They pull this right hand past the ear, this left hand foot lifted. Notice the, the position and back. Whoa. And then we step, lead back, and pull. Ready? Here we go. And one. So kind of sit into that right hip. Two. Lift that left knee high. Three. Ah, no count. Stomach tight. Isometric exhale. And through. Ah. Obviously, if isn't there, hold doesn't matter, so it would look like this. One, two, but if you hold, it's nice to squeeze, squeeze, set, and one more, squeeze, and set. We're going to reach down, and we're going to just come to the outside of the leg and turn the chest. Okay? And this knee's not locked out. We're just stretching also behind the knee though, so you're not totally bent. Extend a bit and just open the chest, this left hand on the hip. Notice the opening here, it's not closed, it's open. Again, ground through the left foot, bring the weight forward and rise up. Good, and we go to the other side. So here we go. One, scoop. Tighten. Toes pull back. The toes pull back and that heel, you'll notice here, the heel is engaged forward. Heels engaged. Not like this. Engaged. Set. And pull. Pull. I'll stop saying pull. Squeeze. Up past your left ear. The palms are out. The chest is twisted left to get this lat. Set. One more. Pull. And set. Good. Now we go reach with the left hand to the foot. Now the chest isn't down. The spine is straight and twisted. Lead this elbow, top elbow, pulls open. And now you're not all the way forward. You're not all the way locked out. You're stretching that hamstring. Stretch behind the knee. Breathe. Press your weight down through your feet. And now we ground through the right foot. Stand up. And we're going to do one more set. One more set. And that will take us to the full leg extension with the cross pull. Cross pull again is, is pulling through each other. This time we're going to extend the leg fully and open up that hamstring. Notice the foot position here. Boom! The foot position, the toes are back. So we're going to do a round of those. Ready? And oh, sit. Push through that heel. You want to swing the knee high and then extend the lower leg. Knee hinges in to the lower foot. Oh. Extend. Extend. Push through. On a rope toe, boom! You feel that rope pull you. Let's do another round. And push. Now going fast is not important. It's more the extension. Your hamstring nail fully extended. 
sit. We do. And then kick, sit, stance. And see from this side, the stance looks like this. We go like this. And we twist. And squeeze back, squeeze the back hamstring. And then touch. On the knee and and just focus on a twist. You're gonna to start to get your IT band here. See if you can push through the eye, the outside edge of your left foot, your front foot, and feel this fascia around the butt. Okay, and then ground through the left leg, stand up, and we do the opposite side. Start with the front left, kick, bah! Step through into the set position, and draw. Push, exhale. Exhale, tighten. Exhale. Ah. Ah. Actually, in all fairness, I'm starting the exhale and tightening, holding the breath, and releasing it after with that thrust. Ah. Ah. Step. Squeeze this left inner groin. Twist. Push. Tighten the left inner thigh. You're dropping your right elbow towards that left heel. And we come down. Stretch. Good. And then put the elbow outside the knee. And we're gonna push into the outside of the right foot. Turn, open the chest. And feel the piriformis, that outer hip wrapping. And we root and stand. All right. Now for, now for, well, that's our lower, Our crescent stretch. Crescent stretch sequence, probably better than I do it this way. Okay, we're gonna start on the right side. We're gonna open the arms, step into that right foot, open the palms to earth and to sky. Draw your right shoulder back. Right, so you're pulling your right shoulder back, you're twisting over here. Now the leg is gonna twist behind as well. Okay, this front foot is still turned out, and the back foot is like the bar of a T, so your feet are like a T. We're going to place the elbow outside the right knee, or lock the arm out there if possible. And here you're in a pretty good twist. Your right IT band is stretching, and we're going to just open and close the arms with a soft wrist on the right side. Okay, now we're going to step through. So the left leg comes forward. And we're going to open the wrist onto the thigh. Push this palm to sky and pull back. Now you're kind of like a weather, uh, weather main. Your elbow is pointing almost to the front, your left elbow, and your right hand is drawing to the back. So this is an opening movement. We're going to close now. So this comes to the back. Left hand comes to the outer knee and we're gonna bring the sternum towards the knee as we thrust this hip back. Make sure you're pushing with the left hand into the outside of the knee and the left heel is floating. Draw the right elbow down towards the instep of the left foot and then the knees will come together. We'll step into a position and we're gonna go down and hook under the knee. Pull our body into our thigh. 
So the soft tissue here is pressing into the thigh, massaging the inner intestines. And now our body is collapsed. We're gonna to touch the foot and open the chest and keep our, our gaze down, but draw back with this left shoulder. Pull. And then maintaining our footing, we're gonna look up. Now this can be hard to maintain balance because your attention is going one way and your body gravity is going another way. Stretch out that neck. Relax the neck. We're gonna come up, grab this hip like we did earlier and lean back, lean back until you get this inner here. From there, we touch the ground, we lift straight up and we're gonna roll back onto the ball of the right foot, stretching out the toes, pull back with this hand and stretch out until you feel the abdomen stretch through here. Good, now we're gonna roll forward into the left leg Brace the lumbar with the left knuckles, and we're going to create a C. And we're going to squeeze the spine, squeeze the butt and the thigh. Try and square your hips directly with this direction. Pull back with the top hand. And we're going to put the foot down. Parallel feet, and tilt back over, and, st and stretch the back. This right hand will drop behind the head, and hold the head from below. And then we'll reach to the sky, realign, and come down. All right, now we need to do that on the other side. And so, up the left side. Ready? And up the left side. Good. Now, notice you're turning that chest towards the back. Top hand is drifting. Okay, you should feel a big arc all the way down through the right side of your abdomen. Step behind with the right foot, and there's a ton of torque in your lower left leg. Reach on top of the left knee and twist so that you're looking to the back. Soft left wrist, the big mouth. Lift and release. As we go through these motions in the twist, we're in a, a held position. We're using the movement to disperse the tension of that and achieve some softness. Okay, we come forward, open the wrist, flat hand like you're holding a tray and pull it back as the elbow draws towards the front. You should feel this behind the left shoulder, across the left pectoralis and bicep. Now notice also that the, your wrist and finger position matters. If you're like this, you don't get it as much. Open and draw back. Okay, now this will fold to the back. You're in that opening. Now we go into the closing. So we touch the outside of the right knee, shift the hips back, push into the ball of the foot, lift the right heel, and bring the chest to the knee. Apply pressure and twist with your left elbow towards the right knee. And now the knees come together and we drop, the left arm will come through and hook the knee as you squish your, your soft abdomen into your thigh. Now we touch the foot, extend the spine. I'm not collapsed on my leg anymore, I'm independent. Full arm's length distance, so this is extended, it's not like this and it's not like this. And then pull back the right shoulder, but still look down. Press your weight. You're not using your hand to hold your weight. Use your foot. That's even more important when you look up. Then we look up. You need to stay grounded through your feet, even though your attention is drifting upward. You can do this against a wall. Release the neck. Grab the hip. Twist. All right, and then touch reach up, left leg in, and we shoot some of the weight back to stretch out the sole of the foot as we pull back through the hand. Okay, support the spine, lift. Now you wanna imagine you're very square, so the you're to my right, and whatever this is, 90 degrees offset from that. Bring the C, squeeze, spine, thigh, calf, but 
bicep, okay? Touch, parallel feet, left foot turns out, and we roll back and we rest our head on our hand as we rest our heart on kind of an imaginary table. And we'll reach up to the sky, pull ourselves back into the vertical, and descend. Now, our spiral grid practice. And we, we bring first, this is my, this is my profile. So I'm right here. I'm right here. So this is where my mind is right here. Here, start out there. What would it feel like if you could just touch something there, which would give you a three point reference. You've got your left and right feet. And this third point, you're just settling like a tripod. And everything that you can think of, imagine in feeling that correlates to peace is the confidence that we have from coming from a place of peace. And we're going to actually go under the feet, right? Like through the midline of the body, under the feet, about 10 inches under the side of the foot. Still a little bit wider than the body. What would it feel like to be rooted so thoroughly that it's like a plumb line that pulls straight down through the vertical of your shin? Think about your lower legs. Are your knees collapsed inward? Are you, are you compressing your arch? Make sure that you're not collapsing your arch. Your arch should be open. You're pushing into the outer edges of the feet. The lower legs are parallel and the knees are slightly bent. The thighs taper into kind of a rooftop. Your heart is over your knees and your hips. Your head is over your heart. Are you drifting to the front in some way? Are you drifting to the back? Are you zigzagging through your spine where your, your body is broken? Push, typically push the hips forward, pull the heart back, and let the head line up with that conjunction. Now we're going to draw our attention up behind the heels, right at ground level, and intuit that crossing. See that cross three-point tripod, so you have the back point and the two feet. Peace. What within your posture here is not peaceful? The peace here comes from focusing on simply making that connection with the ground and making that connection with the earth at the feet. We project our mind and therefore we use our mind. Our mind is not, is not drifting because we're focusing it like a laser. Now we're going to draw an imaginary line up. It's going to come past this, the middle of the shins and these two lines are going to cross right here in front of the knees. And so we hold our hands in relationship. We're not doing this because then we'd break the flow through our vertical. So the vertical is intact, but we hold the connection in front of the knees. And here, faith and faith in the way that it offers protection, the protection of faith, the shield of faith. And the shield of faith, a shield isn't limited to the knees, but it comes up around, it rises up all the way to your head, your heart. And the shield stops all the flaming arrows of the enemy. So all of these attacks, all of the assaults and the insults coming at us, they don't penetrate the, this boundary which is established from our knees up as a force field. And we're going to reference again that midpoint on the shin. And we're going to draw up from there and wrap around behind the knees. Now the tendency would be to pitch the chest forward. We're going to actually pull the chest into alignment and hold resonance behind the knees. Again, faith as a shield, a vertical cylinder, the back matching the front to create this uh, cylindrical force field around the body rising up. And you can see the fiery arrows or the fiery darts coming at you. But once they get to within about two to three feet, they're deflected by this shield of power and shield of faith. And we're doing this subtle refinement within our posture. If we find that we're starting to feel pulled to the front, we would roll our shoulders back, push our hips forward, and bring ourselves back into the truth of alignment. It's a subtlety. If we do gross movements, big movements don't translate. So from the back of the knees, we come around to the midpoint of the thigh, 
just to find alignment and wrap around and cross in front of the hips. And this is like a big comfortable belt. Some people like the feeling of something wrapping around the abdomen, bringing a soothing quality. This is truth, which wraps us through the abdomen, stabilizes like a giant inner tube. Imagine that if you were floating down a river and you were positioned on the inner tube, your elbows propping you, and the inner tube surrounding your abdomen, your navel, how vertical could you make your body, the, the lower and the upper? You're suspended, supported in a kind of donut of truth, this ring of truth, standing within the ring of truth. And it's buoyant like an inner tube. It holds us. We rest into it. Our weight is not fully translating down. It's, it's somehow being held here at, at this level of truth. And we're supporting the structure with the forearms and the hands. And we're going to wrap around down to the mid thigh again. And from the mid thigh, we're going to pull up and we're going to do our best to position our hands around the back of the waist. And it's intuiting. Now the tendency will be to, again to drop the chest forward and push the hips back. So we want to pull the chest up and that's going to drop the arms behind. It's going to open up the pectoralis, open the shoulders and the chest. We're going to have to push those hips forward, keep that kind of the glutes and the hamstrings engaged. So they're pulling us into position. So we're strengthening here. Still the outer edges of the feet are st stabilizing our structure. We're going to come around the side rib cage here and we're going to come into a cross here at the heart. And the cross at the heart is righteousness, integrity, and virtue. It's the breastplate of righteousness. Again, it's a piece of armor. And it's this giant, it's like a second layer to this shield. It's, it's an armor plate to guard our heart so that our heart can be completely free to stand up and not be in protection mode. So the righteousness, we stand in righteousness and the righteousness is the power that keeps us present and the shield, the armor itself, gives us the confidence to expose our heart without fear of death. Annihilation would be another word for it. Are your knees getting locked into a lot? Make sure that there, there's a little bit of vibration you can put through your body so you're not locked. Nothing about your, any of your joints is locked. Pull down into the side rib. And we're going to come up over the shoulders and we're going to intuit the shield or the breastplate behind the body. Now, we're, the best we can, we're going to drift our hands away from the back of the, the thorax, the chest, so that there's a sense of there's a spaciousness behind the heart. Usually that area feels so compressed and congested. And we want to really see if we can create like an, an open zone, almost like a demilitarized zone behind the heart. You can even imagine a kind of a membrane pulling off the, the flesh, off the skin. And helping your breath to move into the intercostal spaces in the back of your chest, the back of your thorax. Try and open up those inner intercostal areas between the ribs. And we're going to rise up. We'll come right past the temple. And we go up to the front of the brow, but it's above the head. And here's the helmet of salvation, which is also the helmet of freedom. And so we lift, we try and lift, push through your feet, lift through your whole skeletal structure and rise up into that helmet, rise into the helmet. You can imagine flames rising from the helmet the way that some of the old, the old helmets used to function. And there's, what is the energy of freedom? What is the energy of salvation? It's eternal life. It's freedom from death, freedom from slavery. What is that uplift? We come back into the alignment of the head, which aligns down through all the side body. And we come back and we hold the helmet behind. Again, we're drawing, drifting the forearms and elbows away from the back of the head, not collapsed, drifting away. The shoulders are descending even as the hands are ascending. And there's this cylinder of breath, this cylinder of light, which we pull down behind the head, behind the heart. It's an unusual feeling to have a consciousness of the space that we hold directly behind our head and behind our heart, behind our hips. It's oftentimes foreign. And it's as though you've never breathed into that part of your body before. 
and then pull out of that. We're going to go straight up into the highest vertical, and we're going to suspend, and we're going to once again connect with the vertical that's uh, the side body point under the feet. And there's a side body point at the shins, side body in the mid thigh, side body in the mid ribs, side body in the side of the head, and then the hands. These six points equally distanced from one another, being drawn in both directions so that you are sort of splayed on this grid rather than uh, bearing its weight. And from there we're going to lift up and just strum down those. And that's what we'll do for right now.